All right, today we're working on a, a whirlpool. You can never see this. I guess it's a sensor drying uh, dryer. Uh, model number is right in here. And the problem is, is uh, it's not heating, and I uh, don't have a lot of energy because I have a cold. But I need to get this dryer working. So um, before you start, make sure you unplug the dryer. And you can, a uh, good way to do this is make sure you can see the end of the cord. And then, uh, so after you unplug it, a good way you can pull these out, don't bend anything, but I just kind of grab it here. You can feel it's not too strong, but if you get a good grip, that'll help slide it around if you're not on carpet or anything. Um, anyway, just don't bend that. But uh, the first thing I like to do is take the. Uh, lint screen out. The reason being is sometimes when you go to work on some dryers the lint screen will actually be held in, holding something because it should be pulled out. You can bend it so I take it out. Uh, a lot of times I'll put screws in there. It's kind of a bad habit but that's what I use it for. So the way this should come off is uh, should I believe I just take these two back screws off. I'm just going to get my tools and uh, and take these two screws out. And let me do that, and I'll be right back. I apologize for stepping in front of the camera, but I don't have any good angle to get in there. I'm just going to take the screws off. All your, uh, you're going to use, the, this is a 5 16 between a 5 16 and a quarter inch uh, socket. You can take apart 90% of the dryer. Alright, so let's see how this goes. These dryers lids are always on there a little differently. I think that there's screws sticking up here and here and there's little slots in here. I'll show you when I get it off. So I push it straight back and I kind of wiggle it. There you go. And there's nothing on here. These little, I don't even know how this one but That's how you take it off. I think now that I look at it, let me show you here. See, it's got these tabs here. Everything, all the dryers are different with this part. It's got little tabs and such, and I think they ride in here. I was expecting bolts or something. To actually, I was expecting the lid to be like this, bolts coming up, but that's not the case. So, anyways, I just slid it back and lifted it off. You saw I did that there. Oh, the reason why I'm doing all this is I get a, I think that the heater element usually typically what goes out in these, and because uh, the rest of the dryer works, it just doesn't heat up. So, um, I got to get underneath the drum because the heating element's way on the bottom. So, let me uh evaluate what I'm gonna do next there. Alright, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, take off some screws so I can get the front panel off. I need to get this up here. Get this wire off. I'll just take this off right now. Alright, soon let me use two hands. It's got a little uh, where we can't see there. Little flippy tab in the back, you push it back, this pops off. This goes to your front panel out here. Um, so, we stick this down in the hole so it doesn't get hung up. Sorry about that. And let's take some stuff off. These are probably going to be quarter inch. this whole section in. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll take that. For 
For some reason these are self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws with cut out so they can cut. I don't know why they did that. I'll put those in the vent or the lint tray. to scratch it up and then you want to support this so I got some wire and I'll just wire it up actually I think I do so go There you go, lift off on that. Let me show you. What I'm kind of should have done, there's four screws along the very bottom. I'll, I'll take those out. I'll put a block in there to lift it up to get me access. Um, I don't know how far I'll get without taking those off. I don't know if you can see it, there's three. Let me get you a better angle. Okay, so what I did is I just had a little paint can, stuck it down there, and then I got to take this screw out right here, and then uh, there's one on the other end like that, and then I'll just loosen the two middle ones, and I'm just going to do that real quick. Now that I got the bottom ones out, you remember I just took the two end ones off, left the two end middle end, but just loosened it up. I'm going to start taking these front ones off. All these screws are normal ones. They're not like self-tapping or like self-cutting ones. There, a quarter inch. Might as well. I think there's two Phillips screws in here that need to come out. Maybe I'll finish taking this off. Oh, it's being supported there. Okay, so in the door here, I see a switch there. I'll get that later, but that reminds me I gotta disconnect the wire up in here um, for the door safety switch. I believe these, yeah, these need to come out. They're just big Phillips screws. Everything's right. Oh yeah, I got. It. See, I already forgot. Let me. Uh, I normally just take that off, but I got to disconnect the wire. Let me get to that, and I'll show it to you. So hopefully, this shows up. Uh, it fell under there, but I disconnect this wire, which goes to the door safety switch in here, and it was just running underneath this. Um, you'll see it. Okay, let me see if I can get this off now. Again, just keep watching for that wire. There it 
Okay, you're right. Alrighty. Uh, I think I'll take off these screws up here next. Okay, let's see how much of this you can see. There it is. Right down here. Just gonna disconnect this. I think it's a oh some kind of sensor, I forgot what it's called. Moisture sensor or something. And then I will uh uh let me get down here and show you. So eventually I'm going to get around to taking these corner screws out. Before I do that, there's this bracket right here. Let me see if I can show you. And i got to take that screw out so I can get this bracket off. And then I will... I think that will let me take these four screws out. So... Anyways, I'll do that bracket next. It just It's just a regular screw down there. Okay, next I'll take those four screws I showed you out. There's little clips here that hold the top in, so that's good. Let me wrestle on this and I'll tell you how it came out. Alright, the top part over there came off. It just got kind of hung up in the corner here. You just have to lift the drum and get it loose and it comes off. Um, so now I need to take the belt off, which is, I can't show you. You just reach in with both hands, underneath there is a wheel. You push the wheel down, take the belt off, and then you can use the belt to pull the whole drum out. Um, so, probably the next shot you'll see I'll have the drum out. Um, it's not rocket science and I got other videos showing you how to do that. Okay, this is going to be interesting because I probably don't have enough video or room to make the video and pull this out. So, probably knock the camera over. Let me see if I can get it back. I don't have a lot of room here to film this. Um, so all I did is I reached in there, undid, pushed down the pulley, and pulled it off. The tension pulley I pushed down and pulled off it off the dryer motor wheel, or pulley, I guess you'd call that. The tensioner I pushed down and pulled the, take the belt off the pulley. So now I can take this out. Okay, um, here's the, that's the pulley thing I couldn't show you, that just, you can feel it down there, you just push that whatever way it wants to loosen, and then take the belt off the, the motor, and that was all so I could get to this piece, which I'll ohm out and uh, see if it's, uh, it's probably cracked, it's probably got a broken link in there, so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so what I did is I just put the ohm leads on the inside wires there and I didn't get any resistance that showed me it had an open circuit. 
so I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Um, should have, I don't know, if I were to guess, I'd say like, I can't remember if it's kilo ohms or whatever. Usually on a standard dryer, it comes up around 9, but you should get some resistance in there. Okay, this next part's going to be for me a little bit too. I'm going to, i got to figure out how to get this uh, heating element off. So I'm going to start by taking these wires off. Let me zoom in there so I can see. Put them back the way I found them. That was easy. What I decided to do is uh, I'll just take those uh, sensors off and leave the wires on. Uh, I really need a hand tool. I'll try with the, with the gun. I don't know if I've got enough room in there. Yeah, I gotta get a handheld one because uh, the gun's hitting the back of the thing and putting it at an angle. But, uh, I'll be right back. Alright, I just backed the screws off and put them back in by hand tight uh, so I wouldn't lose screws. That way I don't have to goof around with the wires on the sensors. It looks like there's a screw down in there, and I'm hoping once I take that off, I'll be able to pull the whole assembly out. And, uh, so unfortunately, I can't. I got to get something to get in there to that screw. So I'm not sure what I'm talking about there. I'm about to fall down here. See that screw right, right there. I got to get that out. And it looks like you access it through the bottom. And I was getting ready to take it out. I found another screw right down. Right down there, and it looks like if I took that out, I could take the whole bracket off and not mess with that other one. They should have put a hole in this thing so I could drop down and get it. So uh, I guess I need a wrench or something to get that screw out, which is going to take a long time to quarter quarter turn at a time to get it out. All right, I just got a little quarter inch socket wrench set up, and it reached down, got that bottom one off. So I just get a little. Pull on the camera right out. Kind of dirty. But uh, then it's just got, oops, sorry. How much of this you can see. But then it's just got screws on the pieces here that I take off to lift this cover off and see what I'm up against there. Okay, so I got it off. That tripod might be there. So now I just need to look in there, see if I can take the centerpiece out or find the break in the wire, see what's going on. Okay, so I took it out, just lifted right out. Um, these little tabs might hold it a little bit. Right here is a, a break. So the thing to do at this point is order a new one of these. Um, you can see it must have been arcing for a while because it kind of heated up this. What is that? Looks like it melted the plate a little bit. There might be a break over here too. Kind of. Yeah, it must have got really hot in there. Warped that. Anyways, that's what the problem is. Let's see how much one of these costs. Probably about 20 bucks if you order it off of Amazon. Okay, a few days gone by. Our uh, new part came in. So you just want to lay it out next to your old part, make sure it looks the same, it's got the same tabs. I kind of just lift it up, put it over the top, it looks like the same size. And remember this is set, where I took that screw out to get this plate off. So I just got to transfer from this over to here, and then put this on top. 
and it's not rocket science so I just want to use two hands to do it and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done so I don't know my battery's cut out so I don't know how much I got this all I did is I took the, the new one put it inside put it on and then there's the screws on the ends here just put that together, it fit together nicely. So now we just gotta take this and put it back in the dryer. Here, I figured I'd show you, since I got this one working, I just put my leads of my meter on those two tabs there, and I think it says it's about 26 ohms. So the other one was not getting any reading because it's broken. Another thing you wanna do, I'm gonna put it on continuity so I can just have it. And, uh, you want to make sure you're not getting any shorts. So just leave one in and there and touch there. And that's good. Um, if the wire was, whoops, if the wire was hitting the edge, um, actually I should watch the meter too because this will only tone if it's low resistance. But yeah, it's not getting anything. So, yep, so that's good. You don't want any you don't want it to um, any of the metal touching the case of it that cause it short and not be good. Anyway, so now I gotta pull this out and get it ready and then I'll just put this inside there. Okay, kind of set things up. When you're moving the dry around, make sure you wear some gloves so you don't cut your hand. Um, I'm just gonna put that camera here and let you watch. I'm just gonna put this guy in. I'm just going to screw it down there. Looks like the screw lined up. So, uh, well, what did I use? Oh, I used this socket to put that in. I don't know if I got it here. So, I'm just going to get a little socket set. Put that screw in right there. Okay, next I just have to hook up these sensors. The one with all the wires on it goes here. And the one that's just kind of by itself goes here. And it really doesn't matter which one of these red leads goes onto which post. Um, so just whatever fits. But uh, you can watch the video and see which one I took off where. But so I'm just going to put all this back together. They've just got the screws right here. I need to take them out, put the sensor on, put the screws back in. Okay, I got all the sensors put in. Um, not much to it, you just put the screws in. And uh, I think next I'm going to put the drum in. There's a drum right over here. And uh, you can't really see me putting it in. Just got to be aware of the rollers. Now's a good time to make sure the rollers work really good. And then um, you're just going to set the drum in there. So you want to check that pulley right there, make sure it spins freely. Mine was uh, hanging up, so I took it apart and cleaned it all up, and uh, now it works good. Yeah, I got working on this, and I kind of realized that tab's not in there right. It's supposed to go in that flap, and I'll show you what that's supposed to look like. So I just got to take out the screw down here and reseat that correctly. Okay, now that I put that in there the right way, this whole section's a lot more stiffer. And so I just put that screw back in, and now we're going to put the drum in. Okay, a couple things you want to make sure it's, the drum's riding on the rollers down there good. Make sure your felt's not being bound here, and same with the inside here. Just kind of take a look at your felt, make sure it's not being pinched. You want to put your belt with the grooves towards the drum. And also the thing you can do, you can take like a, a ruler and measure from here to here. And this can be like 10 inches, whatever it is for yours. And then from here to here, and one, this will be uh, longer than this section. And then we could measure from your belt pulley um, to the back of the wall, just so you get the drum put back in the way it was. I don't know if they balance these or not, but I figure you might as well put it back the same way it came out. You can tell where the belt rides, it leaves a little groove. That's just a marking on there. 
in the belt. Um, so now I gotta go in there and hook the tensioner up. Once I get the belt hooked on, when you turn the whole drum it's gonna be spinning this fan stuff so you don't want to turn it fast. But I'll just turn it gently in this direction and let the pulley naturally line the belt on the groove and that makes sure you know your felt and everything's not getting bound and you just keep doing that until the belt lines up where it used to be. Uh, next we'll put on the bulkhead. I'll probably prop up I might as well show you this. So you keep these two screws here that's to uh, be able to set the front on there they're just backed out and the rest the other two screws that go on the end they're removed so next I'll put on some of the front here. Okay, because the smallest of the room is hard to get a good camera angle. Um, this should hang on these little lips. And I can't tell what you can see, but there's a little notch there. That bracket, support bracket will go down there. I'll show you that later. So all I'm going to do is wrestle this under here. Put the felt there. to get this lined up. I should have probably not put the oil can under there. Or the paint can or whatever kind of can. There we go. I'm going to play around with this. i got to get it lined up but you get the idea. Okay, a couple notes on this. you got to kind of like get the rollers in first at the bottom and you'll kind of know because this will want to fit in there notice that the white lip goes behind the front frame and you got these hangers here same on the other side and uh, you can also reach in and kind of lift up on the drum to help you the main thing is you're going to fight with those rollers getting them into the groove of this lip here um, just don't force anything and all the screws should line up and also, look down here in the felt, should be all matched up down there, that goes in there. And don't forget to hook up your moisture sensor switch, and then I gotta put that bracket in down there. Where's that bracket? Here it is. It only kind of goes in one way. Um, if I remember right. I think it, yeah. And it goes like that, and just goes in there. This little lip here will go on the metal rail down there. Okay, now that I got that bracket in down there, I'm gonna just put the main door on. So, those little notches right there, you can use those little screws to kind of like hold it. So, my game plan is to set it on there, rock it forward, it probably locks in up here. And then, uh, you know, this has got to be kind of out of the way when you're doing this. And then here's your door switch. Don't forget to hook that up. There, and here's your cable. And uh, I believe it'll go through this hole. Oops, sorry, the blurriness. Go through this hole here. So I'm just going to, I guess I can set this up so you can watch me do that. Okay, we'll see if this works out. So... Yeah, my lighting's not the best down there. I don't think those screws are in. So, I'm going to have to line it up and stuff. It'll take me, but that's the gist of it there. And uh, I'll play with it and get it finalized. Okay, I realized I gotta put on this cross beam first. So, there's my cross beam. This should go in pretty easy. I think I'll take my wire off. Let's see if this is coming up. Can't quite see what you see there. Okay. 
Uh, this just sits up here. There's some locking tabs. Just put the locking tabs in and then put the all the screws in. It seems to me I remember these being those weird cutting self-tapping screws. What I do is I spin the drill backwards first so I don't cross thread. When I feel it click one time then I know I'm not going to cross thread. My drill also has a slip clutch on it, so I, I put it to a low setting. Um, can't remember if I put those screws in or not yet. Maybe you can evaluate things there. Okay, a couple things. Uh, I put this screw in here, and I realized I shouldn't have put these ones in, so I took them out. And I just set them over there. Those are these uh, weird cutting screws. I don't know why they use those. And did that on the same side. I gotta review uh, the video and see if uh, I feel like I'm short two screws and I don't know why. Um, maybe these ones don't go there. So I'm not 100% sure. Because I'm looking through my screws and I'm missing two screws. And I don't know why. So eventually I'll have to put two screws in the bottom and secure the bottom in there. Also I forgot to tell you. If you have a water attachment, you should really shut off your cold water line in case something goes wrong and you don't have water shooting all over. But I forgot to do that and I don't have water shooting all over. Um, this panel here has got three, and I seem to remember taking those out. And they should go up here, here, and here. So if that's the case, if I, I'm not i got to review my videos and recover two screws that I shouldn't have put in somewhere, or I've lost them. So let me figure that out. Alright, I found my missing screws. These should not go in there. Actually, at least mine didn't have them in. And I think they forgot to put those in from the factory, because to me, they should be in there. In fact, uh, you know what, I'm going to leave them in and just get two more and put them in there. Um, well, maybe there's a reason. Maybe the door won't fit flush with those in. That's probably the case. They probably <laughs> probably intended to put that in there. So I, I, I'm going to take them out. Because I'm worried that the it'll bump the thing. And that's probably why they weren't in there. Um, so now that I get that out of the way. found my two missing screws that will go in down there. I'm just going to take these two out and then hang the door. Okay, that was easy. I took the paint can out. Which actually made it easier. I just put the bottom on those two screws where the slots were down there and just pushed it forward and uh, that cable goes over here it fell down in there it's right down there out to get it and it just plugs in right there and then there's some little clip hanger things right there it's like that on the other side that's what holds it in and then I'll put put the three screws in and plug in that cable there. This hole is for the control panel uh, which is right there. So the cable and that control panel goes through that hole. So we're almost done. So let me just uh, zip these three screws in the top and there's some Phillips screws in there. I'll show you in just a second. Okay so uh, I just uh, put these Phillips screws in and then, uh, like I said, I was kind of correct on that. If I would have had those other screws in, those holes, this wouldn't have set flush like that. So I zipped in this screw, a screw, and this screw. And, oh, and I hooked up, <coughs> hooked up the cable here. 
uh, to the door switch. So this goes to this door switch here. So that should be all done. Let me uh, sorry about that. Let me you know take my vent screen and put it in. I just forget how this goes. Oh, I guess you can look at the writing, and that kind of tells you which way the front is. There you go. Close this up. And then, uh, let's see, I guess we'll put this on next. This just rocks in really easy. The tricky part, I don't know if I can show you while I'm doing this. One handy. So I gotta put that, oops, see if I can do it. Use my leg gear. It's gonna plug in over there. And this just rocks into place. Uh, hold on. Sorry, it's slipping out of my hand. Um, this is gonna, I thought it rocked, but it didn't. It more like dropped straight down. You'll see there's some plastic tabs down there. Maybe I can, I don't want to pull it out. Anyways, uh, so now we put these screws in here and here, and that's what holds in that front. Got my cable hooked up. Um, let's see. So then after that, I'll put on the lid. Okay, so uh, I just put on the four screws on the bottom to zip them in real quick. And let me show you something on this lid, how it goes on. I couldn't quite tell. See these uh, those little tabs right there? There's my finger right there. So that's what hooks on to the, to the lid. That's kind of what I'm working with. So let me just slide that on. You can tell the front from the back because the back's got the holes in it. You can screw it down. And the front's got little holes right there. There's some tab finger deals in here. You just slide it forward like that and then zip in your back screws. Those are going to be your two biggest screws. Alrighty, uh, got it all back together. Just remember, uh, make sure if you shut your water off, get all that hooked back up. And then uh, plug her in and try her out. Um, I ordered the part from Amazon, and it cost me 20 bucks. So this whole job probably would only took me an hour, probably less than that if I wasn't filming. Um, and then of course the time for the part to come in, and uh, save yourself quite a bit of money if you can fix this stuff yourself. I'm afraid to even think of how much uh, a whirlpool guy would have charged to repair that. Anyhow. Um, if this video helps you out, maybe uh, there's a, a thank you button or something that's got a dollar sign on it. That'd be cool. Thumbs up. And uh, if you subscribe, to see more videos as they come out. Thank you for watching. You have a great day.